and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for our Ionia expansion review of Call of the Mountain. We have about 10 new Ionia cards. We're going to be talking about them here. Those y'all watching later on YouTube, feel free to leave those comments about all these cards, anything I miss, or just what you're super excited about playing with this new set. You can see our schedule over here um, on the left hand side. Freljord was already, uh, we already sent the Freljord video out. Now here's Ionia. Then we'll be talking about the new Shadow Isles cards. And then we're going to be breaking down the Targon region into two different videos. One video with all of the new Nightfall and Daybreak stuff. That's going to be the first one. And then the second one will be with um, all of the Celestial cards and Invoke and Aurelian Soul. We'll talk about that with the second one. All right, but first, we got Lulu and Ionia. Lulu is maybe the champion that I am the most excited about because it's definitely my kind of play style here. So we have a three mana, two, three champion that says whenever uh, you get to attack, you get to support. So that means the ally that's attacking on the right of Lulu will be the supported ally, and that supported ally will be grow will grow up to a four four this round. So that that's going to work well with just so many different things, especially with challengers. You know, like your Fleet Feather Tracker, that's going to be a two one challenger. You can make it a four four challenger with the support of Lulu. Or just so many things like that. Just um, uh, it's going to be good to put Lulu in a uh, an aggressive deck where you're able to grow different things to be four fours, because that's a lot of damage. You can't just sit back and take four damage every turn. That's twenty percent of your life total. So you're most likely going to be wanting to block that thing. And obviously, it doesn't really help supporting units that are larger. You know, when you have like a, a four or five, you're not really doing anything with with the support. Uh, but it works great with small units. Um, yeah, it works great with elusives too. That's a good that's a good call. Yeah, with elusives, making uh, your different elusives going up to four four um, for sure. Especially when you have like your you know shadow assassin. It's a one two. Make that a four four. That's a lot better. And then the level up is our allies have been supported three plus times, and so that that can that does not need to be supported by Lulu. That's just supported in general. Um, sorry, okay, so that's just supported in general three plus times, and that doesn't need to be doesn't for that it doesn't read like it needs Lulu to be in play. Or like you can you can support three plus times before you draw Lulu later on in the game, and Lulu will just be leveled up. Um, and, uh, so then we have the, um, when we have a leveled up Lulu, it's going to be a 3-4 now. So three mana, 3-4, pretty good body. At the round start, you'll create a fleeting help picks in hand. And whenever you support an ally, the supported ally grows up to a 5-5 five five this round. So now we're making our supported allies 5-5s five instead of 4-4s, four which is even better. Plus round start, we get create these fleeting help picks. What's well, a help picks? All right, so it's a one mana fleeting spell with burst. That's these symbols here. So this one's, it's fleeting and it has burst. And give an ally barrier or an enemy vulnerable this round and that can't be cast in combat or in response to a spell. So you can't just respond to a spell by giving some something barrier. You use this proactively, giving something barrier um, or give an enemy vulnerable. So it's a... It's burst in the the effect that your opponent can't counter it and you don't lose priority, but you're you're playing this, you know, like right away before combat um, or anything else. But this this works great of giving, <clears throat> you know, obviously you can give an ally barrier, so like give like Lulu barrier, so then when when you attack in, you don't have to worry about Lulu dying in combat. That works great. Or if your opponent has like something that you really want to challenge, you can give it vulnerable, attack, have your supported ally turn up to a 5-5 five five and then have that 5-5 five five, uh, you know challenge the thing that's vulnerable or even you can give have your opponent have a really if they have like a small unit that you want to kill you can give that vulnerable and then you can have Lulu challenge that small unit and still have the 5-5 five five come crashing in um, so yeah so help picks definitely a really useful spell very um, very versatile which is you know, it's always good to have versatility. And then when you're talking about just a one mana spell, that's that's even better. And you get you get that every single round start. So you can use that on offense, use that on defense. Um, yeah, pretty awesome there. So Lulu's definitely a champion that I'm 
that I'm excited to play. Not like super powerful um, as far as a, a champion is concerned. Um, let's see. Sorry, I need to click on some of these. Okay, I've already done that. Um, so not, not super powerful, but um, definitely a card that's going to be enjoyable to play, and in my opinion. Um, pair, you know, it's kind of similar to Shen in that respect. I've been having a lot of success with Shen, where Shen is just like a, you know, kind of a generic good size body. This one as a 2-3, not nearly as good size, but easy, easier to level up. But, you know, Shen just does the, the support, give things barrier. This does the support, grow uh, different units to be 4-4s four or 5-5s. Five Should be pretty fun to play. Okay, so what, what we're going to do now, like with this order, this order is just by CMC, as you can tell. And so we're going to we're gonna start down um, at the lower cost CMCs and work our way up. All right, so we already talked about help, help picks, um, but then, oh, let me, I have to raise up here so you can see the card. So we already talked about help picks, and then you also I'll have my cursor on the card that we're talking about. Um, so regular picks has its own card. So it's a one mana 01 with support, give my supported ally plus two plus one at this round. That's a cute little card, but where help picks is going to be very helpful, regular picks probably not that helpful it's not a permanent buff it's just a buff for this round i don't think we're playing a card that's a one mana oh one just to be able to help get some support now the obvious thing here is that the having more support helps your lulu level up because lulu just needs to uh, have three allies supported to level up but still we're playing an oh one and an oh one is just it's never going to trade with anything so this card um it's basically like a sorcery or like a, a speed, like a, a slow spell speed. Um, I guess that's how, you know, it's not sorcery, it's, sl it's slow. It's basically like a slow speed give an ally plus two plus one this round, <laughs> All right? Because they're just going to block your picks. Um, hopefully that, that plus two plus one was worth it. Otherwise, you get kind of no value from that. So uh, it's going to be pretty hard to have picks be that useful. Yeah, I agree. The, the picks should just have elusive, right? Like, yeah, I agree. I think that picks should have elusive. Also, I mean, it's an 0-1. It's an 0-1. All right, next card, Flower Child. One mana, one, two. When I'm supported, grant me plus two, plus zero. Now, that is a permanent buff, which is awesome. So this card is very similar to Green Glade Caretaker in that respect where Green Glade Caretaker gets a permanent plus two plus zero buff every time you, um, every time anything gets a barrier, Flower Child gets the permanent buff every time it's supported. I'm not sure exactly how that's gonna stack with Lulu. Like let's say you have, you know, you have your Flower Child, you have your Lulu, you support your Flower Child says that the support ally grows to 4-4 four, four this round. So would it grow to 4-4 four, four, and then also when I'm supported, grab me plus 2, and then that would be afterwards, so then it would be a 6-4? Or would this happen first, and then it would you know turn into a 4-4, four, four, so it would still be a 4-4? Four, four. Not sure. Not sure exactly how that will work. Um, but <clears throat> besides that, I think this Flower Child could just be a, a really good quality 1-drop, because we're just talking about a 1-mana card. You know, it doesn't have to be like the best card ever whenever you're just playing a one mana card but this can have a lot of impact for a one drop because um you can have it uh, be protected by shen with the barrier lulu is a good thing to support it but then when you go into other regions there's some good support cards um like cabo here in chat saying like with legion drummer giving that quick attack that's pretty awesome like if you do that a couple of times you know maybe it's a five two a seven two with quick attack that's great and then even just like war chefs you know that's a classic Support the flower child, give it plus one, plus one until end of turn, but then also give it plus two, plus zero. I'm gonna make it really difficult to block. Picks is a good support. Maybe it's trying to say, okay, play your picks, then play your flower child. You know, support this. It turns into a three, two with this ability, but then plus two, plus one. So now we're looking at a five, three. But still, we're spending that whole card with the picks. I'm not sure we're doing that. I think you want to play good, good support cards. With their flower child but this can definitely be a decent one drop all right and then we have another support card here with the young witch 
So two mana, one one elusive. Kind of like how Pick should have elusive, because like a one one body, not very good, but at least has elusive, so you, you know, it's hard to kill in combat. But then it gets to support, give your support ally quick attack and plus one plus zero this round. So that one works. That one can work pretty well with the Flower Child. With this being elusive, I'm much more interested in playing the Young Witch over the picks. It's not not as likely to just die in combat. So now we're starting to get a, a nice little uh, combo going here with Flower Child on turn one, Young Witch on turn two, and then Lulu on turn three. They, they definitely um, built these cards and designed them to work really well together. So your Lulu is going to support your Young Witch, which will turn your, your Young Witch into being a 4-4 elusive. And your Young Witch is the, therefore going to support your Flower Child, which is going to give it um, plus three, plus zero total, two of it being permanent, and make it a four-two quick attack. So you know you have build your own Senna, basically with the young witch and the flower child. So now you have you have you know a four-four elusive attacking. You have Senna attacking. That was your one mana card, and then your Lulu also attacking. Now your your Lulu is only a two-three though, and is not um, really a, like neither. The problem with all of this is your Lulu is a two-three. It's very easy to kill a 2-3 in combat. Neither of these protect Lulu from being a 2-3. But those, those kind of work together. Um, and yeah, that, that can be a lot of damage coming in quick. Because even if they do block the Lulu, if they take 4 from the Young Witch, 4 from the from the Flower Child, you know, that's a lot of damage coming in there. Um, yeah, yeah, you wouldn't... If you have the attack on turn three, like if you play Lulu on turn three and attack, Lulu would not have supported. But if you have the attack token on turn two and you get to attack on turn two with the Young Witch, and then turn three you play Lulu, turn four, then on turn four you attack with both of them, your Lulu will level up, and you'll also have the spell mana to protect Lulu with maybe like a barrier or something like that. So that would be a little bit better for you if you have the attack token on turn two and turn four. Um, yeah, or you could do it the other way. You could you could have you could do it the other way. That's true. Of even if you're attacking on turn three, have Young Witch support the Lulu and give the Lulu the plus one plus zero and quick attack, and then Lulu support the Flower Child and make Flower Child larger. You could also do it that way too to to keep your Lulu from dying. That's a good good call there. So a bunch bunch of good good little uh, stuff here, and you know like this will definitely fit in. A lot of different decks. Like we're talking about a one mana unit, a two mana unit, and a three mana unit. Like those are those are things that can go in a lot of different styles of decks. These aren't like super expensive cards. Um, they're like the low part of the curve where where you want uh, low part of the curve. All right. Um, some other Ionia cards. We have Tasty Folk, a four two life steal. Now, in general, that for three mana in general that's not like a, a wonderful card but it's not bad either dreadbloom wanderer for shadow isles is a three two lifesteal for three now of course that tosses three so that's really important for the toss deck but it's also a really good blocker and just a good card of of being against aggro the tasty fey folk is a four two so it's even bigger with that lifesteal like that's a lot of life to lifesteal um, with four that's so that's a pretty big body now it does die to mystic shot so you know it has some downside but it's only a three mana card it also this card also just works perfectly with these other support cards that fey folk is a great card to give plus one plus zero and quick attack this round make it five power life steal quick attack that is awesome with young witch then you can also grow it to be a 4-4 and just make it a 4-4 lifesteal. That's, you know, that's having, you know, three mana 4-4, that's Loyal Badger Bear. You know, so you can have Loyal Badger Bear with, um, with lifesteal if you're supporting it with Lulu. And of course, if, if you have been doing your support stuff and your Lulu's leveled up, then it's a 5-5. Five five, so you're basically building your own Radiant Guardian here with your 5-5 five five lifesteal. Um... And then, yeah, that's true. It works great with help picks. You know, help picks just works great with all this stuff with the different barrier and vulnerable. Um, so, yeah, so much synergy in here with these Ionia cards. Definitely looking good together. Yeah, and, and then also, yeah, you have Fae Folk into turn four Shen. 
Shen, support your Fey Folk. Um, give it Barrier, so you get to attack in for four life steal with Barrier. Very nice. All right, we have um, next card is Whimsy. Four mana burst speed. Uh, transform a follower into a one-one squirrel and silence it this round. So this is a this is a burst speed spell. Now it doesn't hit champions. So we're only hitting followers, but you can do this during combat of turn any follower into a one-one squirrel and silence it. And that's that's this art of this little one-one uh, squirrel. This isn't a, a card, but um, so this is basically going to be a removal spell. Uh, you know, like they attack in with their uh, Cythria, like their 6-6, six -six, and you get to just turn it into a 1-1 one -one that's silenced. Um, and then you get, you know can block it pretty easily. Um, yeah, this Whimsy is pretty awesome. This is a great combat card. It doesn't... You can't use it really to protect your units against removal spells, but this is such a great card in combat. Um, and it's... The thing about this Whimsy is this would be awesome in mirror matches. If we're talking about all of this support stuff, you know, you get to get rid of the bonuses that these have from support and turn them into 1-1s. One this is awesome, like, in mirror matches against, uh, like, in combat. Like, this Whimsy kind of wrecks the whole game plan that we've been talking about with Lulu, Young Witch, <clears throat> and the support. Um, so... Yeah, this whimsy looks very good. Good spell. That's the thing about like this this set is there's not a whole lot of from what we've seen with this set so far, Call of the Mountain. There's not a lot of spells that interact with the opponent's units. There's not a lot, especially removal spells. And this is one that you can use as removal. Now it's got to be during combat, or you can pair this together with something like a Mystic Shot um, to be able to kill it. So this is also just a good control card, and you can tell, as you can see here, this is Lulu's champion spell, is also this Whimsy. This could also just be a, a good control card in a like a um, an Ezreal Karma deck. You can use Whimsy to take any size of follower, of course not champion, but any size of follower, you know, even like a Ledros or anything, turn it into a 1-1, one -one, and then you can use your Static Shock or your Mystic Shot or your Make It Rain or whatever you want and get rid of it after you turn it into just a 1-1. One, one. It's a way that people can get rid of like the Undying um, or anything like that. And yeah, we just got... Um, so yeah, we're going to be going over Targon later with the Aurelian Soul and yeah, all the Celestial cards and Dragons and stuff like that. And Whimsy can be an important card to deal with all of those huge Dragons. Um, you know, we're not dealing with the Champions, but there are still very large followers running around. Uh, we talked about the Freljord cards with um, like the 8 mana 7-7 seven, seven Challenger Regenerate. This card is great against that thing. You know, turn that into a 1-1. One, one. They challenge, you know, they try to challenge your champion, try to use that as a champion removal spell. Boom, now it's after they challenge, now you just turn it into a little 1-1. One, one. So, Whimsy, I think we'll see a, a pretty decent amount of play. Yeah, they who endure. Good call. Yeah, they who endure. Perfect against that for sure. Yep. Um. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, against the deep decks. True. Especially like the the big, you know, the six six elusive that draws a card that's coming in. You just whimsy it. Yep. Yep. All right, we have our next one is Swole Squirrel, four mana, three, four. Whenever it strikes, double my power. So now this is just a regular strike, not a Nexus strike. So it can just, it can strike a unit and then it will double the power up to six. And then it strikes again, now double it to 12. Strike again, double it to 24. So you can see how it can do some crazy stuff. Now it doesn't have any kind of elusive, doesn't have any kind of overwhelm. Um, this would work very well with support like maybe if we're making a lulu support deck and if we want Sw swole squirrel maybe we start maybe we pair it with noxus and noxus can give us like the legion drummer for support but then also cato the arm and cato the arm can support swole squirrel here giving it plus three plus zero and overwhelm maybe that's something we can do um 
there's also that that new for card that we just talked about the six mana card that gives a unit overwhelm and regenerate you could do that with the swole squirrel but of course we need to strike with this thing a couple of times the young witch will help it strike shen could give a barrier and help it strike um, if you're pairing with Demacia, then, you know, you can use your single combat and concerted strike and things like that to help your swole squirrel strike. Um, Noxus, you'd have your whirling death. So, you know, you can get some ways to make this thing strike, double its power, um, and then maybe try to find a way to get it through, maybe with Overwhelm, um, or something like that. Um, yeah, yep. Uh, yeah, Tariq, that's true, in Targon. Uh, we'll we'll go get over that card. But yeah, Tariq is a good another good support card with Targon. Um, so we'll see. Swole Squirrel. This is a card to build around. Like if you play, like I don't think you don't just throw Swole Squirrel into your deck. Like this isn't just a card that you're just like, okay, this is a good card at four mana. We're just gonna put this into our our deck and just you know it should it should be fine. This is a card that you build around. This is a card that you have your whole deck built around with the intent of um, having this Wool Squirrel grow to be a large threat and then enable it to deal Nexus damage with a large amount of power. So no matter how you use it, it's definitely a card that that's, that's like a, going to be either a main or secondary purpose of your deck, but it's definitely going to be the intent of your deck to be able to achieve that at different times it's not going to be a card that you just put in any deck um then we have the fuzzy caretaker four mana three three whenever i'm supported give me plus zero plus three this round um, and then also it has support itself give your supported ally plus three plus zero this round so I'm not exactly sure with the Swole Squirrel. I'm not exactly sure how it will work with um, buffs that are not permanent, right? Like if you give it plus three, plus zero with the Caretaker, so it's so now it's a 6-4 and it strikes, does it just turn into a 12-4 permanently? You know, same with like War Chefs that would pump it up, the Lulu that pumps it up a little bit. I'm not sure. I'm not sure exactly how that works with non-permanent buffs and then that, which is supposed to be permanent. I'm not sure. I guess, I guess what would happen, this would be my guess, is that you would support the Swole Squirrel, now it's a 6-4, you strike, then it's a 12-4, and then at the end of the round, it will get rid of, it won't have that plus 3, plus 0 anymore, so it will be a 9-4 permanently. That would be my guess, is that that's what would happen. Um, anyway, the, alright, so Fuzzy Caretaker, though, another really good support card, because it, this helps being supported and also supporting. So like that's a pretty awesome combination of the two that you can have with all of these. This is the kind of card that you could have this support your young witch because your young witch is elusive. So you can give this thing plus three, plus zero. While then it has other cards like Lulu or you know whatever else your Shen or something else protects your or um, supports your caretaker, and then your care caretaker gets the plus zero, plus three also, so it helps it stay alive even more. Um, and then finally, our last Ionia card, Fey Guide. This one's a pretty decent card, another four mana, three, three, but again, you're, you're kind of, you're probably not throwing this in any deck, but Grant play Grant and Ally Elusive is pretty strong. We've seen how good Elusives are. Elusives keep getting nerfed in this game because we find out that elusive having elusive is a really really strong ability this card is something that you could use in your swole squirrel deck if you are building around swole squirrel and you want to be able to have this strike your nexus just like i was just talking about a little bit ago um fey guide is a wonderful way to do that you play this it's not like you don't need like an allegiance trigger or anything to happen like this is always going to grant an ally elusive so there you go you you have your swole squirrel connect with these different things and then boom grant it elusive um and then uh finish your opponent out with that um <laughs> so yeah the the thing i really like about ionia in this uh in this set in call of the mountain is that these cards really all work well together like like these are all very good cards together 
and um, Freljord, we saw like some cards in Freljord work well together, and then other ones kind of work well together with themselves, and kind of pairing them all together, you know, maybe seems a little bit more difficult, or or some of the Freljord cards didn't really seem good enough to be played. I can see all of these cards playable, like every single one of these cards, except for except for picks. <laughs> Um, I feel like can be pretty playable. Um, yeah, picks is going to be kind of tough to, to play that one. Just the one mana 0-1. But besides that, looks pretty good. And, and this is definitely my kind of my kind of games here with um, uh, with Lulu and all the support. And uh, that's that's the kind of games that I like to play. I like uh, combat being such an important part of the game. I'm su there is Whimsy. Whimsy is a really good spell, but I am kind of surprised that Ionia doesn't have very many spells because from what we've seen from the other expansions so far is that Ionia is a region that, that cares a lot about spells. But this, with Call of the Mountain, we're not really getting the spells with Ionia. So I'm, I'm a little, um, uh, <laughs> little surprised with, with that part of Ionia. But also with Ionia being the spell region, it's also kind of a support region just for for the other regions. It does seem like it's a really nice support region. So now that it cares about the actual keyword supports, I think that also makes a lot of sense. And so that that's a nice little flavor thing. Um, <laughs> you're gonna go five zero with these decks, and I'll go two three. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean it's we'll see. We'll see how uh, these all pair together and what regions to pair with. We talked about like Demacia is just the very generic curve out support region it's, that's the most obvious one but even noxus we talk about like legion drummer and cato the arm and whirling death you can get some really good stuff in noxus with ionia and uh, noxus can do some more direct nexus damage if you want to kind of start pairing some elusives together with noxus and, and ionia and all the support stuff um you know kind of make it a, an elusive aggro deck that seems like a really good way to use Lulu. Um, but yeah, so there we go. So that's Ionia. All right, those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there. Leave those comments. Um, you know, what what are you planning on with these new cards? What do you want to see me play right away? What kind of decks do you want me to build? Um, you know, what are you really excited about? All that kind of stuff. Anything that I forgot to mention with these cards, any other ways to use them, um, you know, feel free to leave those comments. I would appreciate it. But thank you so much for watching uh, the Ionia part of the Call of the Mountain expansion review, and I'll see you for the next video.